This is Dr. Wilshire at Missouri Fertility. Welcome to the fourth edition in our nutrition series where we're going to discuss the treatment of lean polycystic ovarian syndrome. I also call this condition athletic polycystic ovarian syndrome. As you will find, uh, to understand how to treat a certain type of PCOS, we need to understand the environment for which these genetics are best suited. Now, how does a woman know she has lean polycystic ovarian syndrome? Well, there's some stereotypical features which might be helpful. One, women with lean PCO tend to have very slender, narrow frames. They tend to be very small up top, straight through the waist and the hips, and in fact have a somewhat uh, increased waist to hip ratio. They tend to be very lean and have body types of this sort. Uh, these women also seem to have a propensity to run, an urge to exercise. Uh, we don't know where it comes from, but it is part of their essence. They love to run uh, and uh, do other uh, exercises. Now, uh, here I give tribute to a friend of mine, Gary Taubes. Gary Taubes points out the fact that these women are not lean because they run. They run because they're lean. Uh, this is something you can't teach. Now, without getting too deep into the hormones or the endocrinology of lean polycystic ovarian syndrome, let me just touch on one important fact. Women with lean PCO tend to have high levels of a hormone called luteinizing hormone, or LH. When luteinizing hormone uh, hits the ovaries, it tells them to make extra testosterone, and this is the basis of the athleticism. Unfortunately, to ovulate and to menstruate normally, women uh, need to have a luteinizing hormone that fluctuates. It needs to be up, it needs to be down. Uh, Women with lean PCO can have regular men menses or they can be irregular. It's very unpredictable. Now, how does one naturally lower luteinizing hormone? Well, it turns out that chronic stressors such as starvation, illness, war, famine, excess exercise, very low body fat, these are all drivers to push luteinizing hormone down. And sometimes we'll have women who come to us who are simply running too much. They're not menstruating, they're running too much. We uh, increase their food, decrease their exercise, and magically they start to menstruate and become fertile. Some of these women, however, see an increase in their acne, their menses don't come back, and it turns out that they've had lean polycystic ovarian syndrome, but it was masked or hidden by these high exercise levels. This is a hint in how we might want to treat uh, lean PCOS. Now, an analogy I have for lean PCOS is that of brittle diabetes. There are some individuals that require insulin and they're type 1 diabetics. Some people, however, you give them just a little too much insulin, their blood sugar crashes, goes way low, and they have horrible problems with super low blood sugar or hypoglycemia. These same individuals, you give not enough insulin and their blood sugars go through the roof and becomes very high and they suffer from all kinds of other problems such as nerve and blood vessel damage from these high blood sugar levels. These brittle diabetics run a very narrow tightrope, and this is a good analogy for women with lean PCOS. They have a tendency to grow, have very high luteinizing hormone, yet there are drivers to lower luteinizing hormone, and where we find the cusp or the happy medium is very sharp and very difficult uh, uh, to find or to meet. Uh, in my experience, women with lean PCO tend to start ovulating when they've been on the low side, they've been over-exercising or maybe not eating enough, and when they decrease and they come from hypo to hyper, ovulation occurs, and that's when uh, we see good natural fertility. Obviously, this has happened over the millennia, because these women clearly have passed on their genes because they've had children uh, throughout uh, history. So, how do we treat women with lean PCO with diet? First of all, because they tend to be very active and we're going to encourage activity, they must get high quality protein and as you know, animal sources are the best way to get high quality proteins. They must have act adequate nutrients, so obviously the other foundations of nutrition, natural fats, colorful vegetables and salads are very important to get the vitamin component as well. But where lean PCO, I believe, differs from garden variety PCO, these women do benefit from some carbohydrates. Now, we don't want to go overboard and eat uh, meals of all carbs, but moderate servings of carbohydrates, preferably from root sources or maybe rice rather than wheat and other grains, 
may be a good source of carbohydrates in this situation. And finding the happy medium uh, between energy requirements and exercise needs, yet keeping luteinizing hormone down is tough. And that's where customizing this and seeing how a woman actually responds uh, may be very valuable. Once again, these women are on a knife edge and determining just how much exercise and just how much carbohydrates will get them into this ovulatory state can often be very tricky. Now, once a woman does get her hormones close to normal, we can frequently if, uh, encourage ovulation if, for, if uh, pregnancy is not forthcoming. Uh, as opposed to garden variety uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, however, women with lean PCO frequently do not respond to the cheap, simple medications such as Clomid and Letrozole. Some do, and that's why we usually try this, uh, but don't be surprised if no matter how you get the exercise and nutrition right on the money, uh, that these pills do not work. In these cases, we will sometimes go on to injectable medicines where we give actual follicle stimulating hormone required for ovulation. Problem with this approach, however, is sometimes women don't respond, and when we increase the medicine to a certain point, they over respond. And can you imagine how frustrating it must be to have a woman who's not ovulating, and then all of a sudden we're making six or eight follicles at very high risk of multiple pregnancies, and we're suggesting that a woman cancel a cycle after investing uh, all this money and time and effort into it. So once again, these ladies are real, really brittle, and it's hard to find the happy medium. Uh, unfortunately, in some women, we never can find that medium, and we just move on to in vitro fertilization. Uh, with IVF, we can make as many follicles as we want within reason. We can remove the eggs, make embryos, and then transfer single embryos, avoiding the problem of the multiple gestation. Uh, these women are generally very healthy, and pregnancy rates uh, uh, with this treatment are tremendous. So, there's a discussion of lean polycystic ovarian syndrome. Very tricky. You must individualize treatment. But once you understand what lowers LH and what increases FSH, and allows us to best hit this happy medium where ovulation can occur and fertility can be restored uh, is very, very interesting. So, I hope you found this valuable. This is Dr. Wilshire at Missouri Fertility. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Instagram.